In this video, I want to go over some of the features of the adaptive cruise control in the Tesla Model S. Uh, so this is the cruise control lever uh, situated on the left side of the steering wheel, as you can see. Um, and I've got my steering wheel sort of turned a little bit so that we can see it a little better. Um, the, the cruise control stick is the third one down uh, from the top. Um, the top one is the windshield wipers and blinkers, and then there's a middle one that controls the position of the steering wheel, <clears throat> forward, backward, up and down, and then the bottom one is the adaptive cruise control, um, as well as the lever that activates um, autopilot. And actually, I mean, adaptive cruise control is actually a part of the autopilot um, convenience features, as they call it. Uh, so. There's basically two components to it. Uh, one is uh, the end here, this knob, and then the second part is the rest of the shaft. Um, so I'll start from the outside in. Uh, this button, uh, I think it used to activate <clears throat> uh, cruise control, but it doesn't anymore. Uh, this actually now just deactivates either autopilot or um, cruise control, either one. Um, and then you'll also mark, uh, notice that there are some um, arrow markings over top uh, two cars, one following the other. And what that does um, is uh, this knob controls uh, how far you, f um, how closely you far follow the car in front of you. So you can adjust it, Let me adjust the focus here, anywhere as far back as a level seven, um, all the way up to a level one. And you can see the car in front expand and whatever. I usually um, end up somewhere around the fours and fives most of the time on freeway as well as city driving. So that's what that end knob does. And so let's move in now to um, the cruise control lever. So it moves four ways. Uh, it'll move up, down, uh, backwards, and um, towards me. <clears throat> Um, so what does that do? Well, let's stop, or let's start with um, these icons up here. I'm not sure if I can get, yeah, there we go. You can see there's kind of a, there's a zero, and then there's a cruise control icon there. What that's referring to is um, backwards and forwards pushing. So backwards will, un, will um, reset it or inactivate it. Uh, whether auto steer or um, cruise control, and then pulling it forward will activate it or set it to the desired speed. Um, pulling it once will just do the adaptive cruise control, pulling it twice like this will activate auto steer um, if it's available and if it's activated in um, that particular vehicle. Um, next, I'm going to increase the brightness just a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so next we have the up and down, plus and minus. Um, that refers to your speed setting. So if you push it up, it'll go up one mile per hour. If you push it down, it'll go down one mile per hour. Um, there's, there's two notches though. You can push it up, and then there's a little resistance, and you can push beyond that. So if you push it all the way up, uh, it will actually increase by five miles per hour. And if you push it down, uh, all the way, it'll inc uh, decrease by uh, five miles per hour. Um, so that way, you don't have to like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, if you if you have a large difference in speed that you want to change. <clears throat> and another convenient thing, which I'll show in a demonstration later on when I'm driving, um, is that uh, let's say you've set the cruise control to maybe 20 miles per hour. Now, or you're on the freeway and you need it to be like 70 or something like that. Um, with the cruise control inactivated at your new speed, uh, if you pulled this way, it would just set it to the to the previous speed, which would be 20 miles an hour. But if you push it all the way up, um, after having it deactivated, it will actually reset to your new higher speed. Um, and it also does the same thing with lower. So let's say you were going 45 miles per hour. Now you want to, um, and, and then it's been deactivated because you, you know. Um, merged off a freeway or something like that, and now you want to set it to 25 miles per hour, which is what your current speed is, you just push that all the way down, 
and it'll match your lower speed. So pretty convenient feature there and it'll make more sense later when I demonstrate that. And then uh, finally is this last marker with the um, cruise control emblem and then an arrow that way. That refers to this button which we said before deactivate it. deactivates it. So there's a couple, there's actually I think three or four ways to deactivate uh, cruise control. Um, one is this way, another is pushing the bar away from you, another is pushing on the brake, and I believe taking or unclicking your seatbelt will do it as well, but I haven't tested that one. Um, so just have to take my word for that, or somebody's word. I heard somebody else say that. It might have been in one of Bjorn Nealon's videos. So that's it. That's a little primer on, um, on the stick itself. So let's check it out on the road. So now I'm on the road and I want to show you some of the features that I talked about with the cruise control. Um, the first thing that you'll notice um, up here is once I get to 18 miles an hour or uh, above, the uh, cruise control um, icon will pop up as a gray icon, which means that it's not active. Um, but it can be activated uh, above 18 miles per hour. It'll still work. Um, I mean, if you activate it and then you end up going less than 18 miles per hour, it'll still work, even in stop and go conditions. And now you can see, as soon as I go faster than 18 miles per hour, I've got a red light now, but um, the cruise control uh, icon appears. And what it is, is a speed dial, basically, uh, with a needle that's dynamic. And so the faster I go, the more that dynamic needle moves up. Um, and then once it's activated, the icon will turn blue and there will be an arrow along the along the curvature uh, showing where I set it. And I'll show you that in a sec. So as I mentioned, there's several ways um, to initially activate cruise control. I can either pull the lever towards me or I can push it up or I can push it down. That will activate it um, either way. Going above 18 miles per hour. Now it's available, so let's hit it. I'll just pull it towards me, and boom, it sets to my to my speed, and you can see that there's an arrow there indicating where I am. Now if I speed up, you can see that arrow moves. See, 15 miles an hour. Now let's say I want to reset my, um, my speed. Pulling it toward me won't do anything, but all I have to do is touch the lever up, and it matches my speed. Same thing if I want to um, go slower. So let's say I go down really slow. All I have to do is push that lever down a little bit and boom, uh, there it is. Now let's say it's already set and uh, I want to go even slower. I can either hit it down one notch or if I go two notches, it will go down in increments of five as opposed to one. Same thing going up, if I hit the bar up, uh, it'll inc increment in uh, one mile per hour, um, or I can advance it in multiples of five, um, or I should say intervals of five. So it's pretty easy to use. Other some older cars, um, in order to reset it, you know, you push and hold at the speed you want to be. Uh, this doesn't have any push and hold features. Um, it's replaced by basically by the up and down motion. Um, as well as, you know, pulling the lever towards you. Um, and that's basically it. Um, it took me a while to figure out that there were actually two notches. One for single, single digit adjustment and one for um, intervals of five. Once I figured that out, it was pretty cool. And um, just realizing that, you know, if I want to jump, jump up 20, 30, 40 miles per hour, I don't have to adjust it. Um, all the way up there, I just hit up um, to adjust my speed to my new new high or push down if I want to adjust it to my new slower speed. Um, so that's it. Um, disengaging, uh, yeah, like I said, there's um, several ways. One is to push the bar away from you. Uh, another is to use the brake. Another is to use a button at the end of the, at the end of the, um, cruise control stick um, and I've heard that if you unclick your seatbelt that also disengages it um, but I haven't confirmed that um, 
And uh, finally, as this relates to autopilot features, um, cruise control, adaptive cruise control is part of the autopilot suite. Uh, so when you when you have autopilot engaged, um, adaptive cruise control is, is engaged as well. Uh, let me show you that. Let's see. It should uh, yeah. There we go. Just go down a little bit there. Um, so any of those deactivation methods will deactivate autopilot. Um, but if I grab the steering wheel and I make a corrective move, it'll disengage auto steer, but it does not disengage um, the cruise control, which is handy because if I need to make an adjustment on the freeway or make sure it doesn't try to take an exit um, in this current beta release, you know, I don't necessarily want the cruise control to stop and then my car to start slowing down. I just want to make a correction and then re-engage the auto steer when it's fine. So um, that's one interesting feature. So anyway, that's about it. It works really well and um, looking forward to the next software update to these features. Thanks for watching.